You decide to try a new coffee brand that has a nice golden packing and proudly says 100% coffee on it. But it tastes nothing like your favorite drink. Don't blame yourself for being the worst barista on the planet. The substance you just purchased might just not be the real thing at all. It's so expensive because of how it's made. Coffee plants can't be hurried to grow. Depending on the type of coffee, it takes a coffee tree about three to five years to start bearing fruit. Coffee farming is a people-powered industry, from planting to processing. Coffee farms are often huge, so you need many workers to plant all those new trees. And it takes about 2,000 hand-picked Arabica coffee cherries to make a single roasted pound of coffee. If you want to get the best out of the variety of options, don't fall for labels saying 100% pure coffee. If it doesn't say 100% Arabica, they must have mixed in cheaper Robusta beans, which can make your coffee taste bitter. Check the roasted on date for freshness, not the best by date. When a brand offers a gazillion artificial flavors, it's a sign they're not confident in their beans quality. A good roaster might have a few unique flavors, but not a whole buffet. In Japan, you'll find wasabi all over the place, but chances are, if you've tried it outside of that country, you've had a fake. True wasabi doesn't come from your regular horseradish plant. It's more like a root vegetable made from the underground stem of the wasabi plant. This stem is grated to make the real wasabi paste. Growing wasabi plants isn't easy as they only like clear running stream beds in Japan's mountain river valleys. That's why the real thing is so pricey. Fake wasabi is usually a mix of regular European horseradish disguised as the real deal. You'll find it in squeezable tubes, little packets, or as a powder you mix with water. These products often contain just a tiny bit of the real stuff, usually 1-3%. to It helps cut costs a lot. If you want to check if you've got real wasabi, check the texture. If it's super smooth and pasty, you're likely dealing with pureed horseradish. But if it's got a gritty feel, like it was freshly grated, it's more likely the real deal. Authentic wasabi is always served fresh because its flavor and zinginess vanish quickly once it's grated. The only Parmesan that you can really call this way gotta come from the Emilia-Romagna region in Italy, especially Parma or a certain part of Lombardy. There are only about 300 certified dairies in that area that can make genuine Parmigiano Reggiano. And they've got to age it for at least a year to get those super important umami flavor crystals going. Some of it ages for up to a hundred months or longer. The authentic Parmesan wheels are marked with a DOP stamp. Denominazione di origine protetta, basically saying it's the real deal from the right place. Italian Parmesan is easy to find in most stores, but there are other options that can be cheaper. That's because American-made Parmesan only needs to be aged for 10 months, and some grated blends can have up to 4% fillers, like rice flour or wood pulp cellulose. The legit Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese only has three ingredients, and one of them is milk from cows raised in the same region. Plus, they've got some strict rules about what those cows can't eat, like fermented grain. Maple syrup fans, this one's for you. Did you know that to produce your favorite pancake topping, artisans have to tap maple trees that can grow more than five stories tall, extract sap, and then boil it down? It's an age-old craft passed down through generations from indigenous peoples to modern-day syrup makers. But many of the bottles with sticky sweet syrup inside have nothing to do with that process. Pancake syrup, or table syrup, is a mix of corn syrup, caramel coloring, and flavoring. If you see these ingredients on the label, it's a telltale sign you aren't dealing with the real maple syrup. The consistency of your purchase is another giveaway. The authentic maple syrup is runny. That's why you can pour it easily. Pancake syrup is thicker and stickier. The price can't always give away a fake in this case. It can be affordable even for the real product.
Another item that often gets counterfeited is designer bags. To make sure you're buying the real thing, give that purse a good feel. If it's supposed to be leather, it better feel and smell like it. Counterfeiters often skimp on quality materials. Check out the zippers, buttons, or any metal parts. They should feel solid, not lightweight or cheap. And of course, no chipping allowed. Look closely at the seams. Sloppy or uneven stitching is a big red flag. The inner lining is another giveaway. Feel it and make sure it matches the brand's quality. Pay attention to the brand logo. Authentic ones are all about the details. The same goes for the label inside the bag. Get familiar with how it should look so you can spot any slip-ups. Check the number and placement of pockets. Each model has its own design. If it doesn't match up, something's fishy. Shady dealings with extra virgin olive oil date back to ancient Rome. Back then, tricksters would sell low-quality oil or mixes under the fancy Evo label. Nowadays, most legit extra virgin olive oil comes from Spain, Italy, or Greece. They produce it by squishing ripe olives without heating or chemicals. Good Evo might cost you around 10 bucks for a 17-ounce bottle. Fraudsters have gone undercover amidst real producers, making it tough to spot the fakes. But you have more chances of finding the real thing if you avoid blend or light varieties on the label. Check the pressed-on date. It should be less than a year old since the oil loses its fruity vibe after a couple of years. If there's a harvest date and details like the producer's name or olive type, it's likely legit. Some high-quality oils note the free fatty acidity, FFA, level, which is a good sign. Don't automatically trust fancy packaging or high prices. Even an expensive bottle can be past its use-by date. If you like to cook, cinnamon, mint, nutmeg, sage, and other spices must always be in your kitchen cabinet. But you can't be sure you've got the real thing unless you're prepared to pay a hefty price for them. When you break it down by the pound, some of them, like vanilla and saffron, are as pricey as precious metals like silver and gold. And where there's value, there's a dark underbelly of fraud. This multi-billion dollar industry is a playground for tricksters looking to make a quick buck. If you don't want to add something fake to your meals, the best you can do is buy the spices whole and grind them yourself. If possible, try to find a retailer that sells spices in bulk. You'll be able to see them yourself and you won't miss the aroma of real cinnamon or oregano. If you're planning to buy a designer watch, look closely for any blunders or defects on the watch. Designer watches are usually made with high quality standards, so things like chipped paint, scratches, or spelling errors are rare. Also, check if the clasp works and if the watch keeps accurate time. Genuine designer watches have precise, clear engraving created by skilled watchmakers. If the lettering looks messy or hard to read, chances are it's a fake. Designer watches are made with valuable metals and intricate parts, so they should feel a bit heavier than they look. If a watch feels surprisingly light, it might be fake. Real luxurious watches have unique serial numbers that should be precisely laser etched, not sloppily printed. Make sure these numbers match the case and warranty numbers. Simply search online or contact the manufacturer's customer service to confirm you've got the real thing. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.